We, I do want to tell you a little bit about kind of one of our featured tools, and then we'll do a kind of broad sweep of the other tools and some of the initiatives that we have. So um, the one that I want to tell you about that's kind of our featured tool is actually a smartphone app that we've developed and are continuing to develop. It's called Leadership Amplifier. And the point of this app is to put people into communities of learning together. Uh, so let me give you some uh, demonstrations real quick. Uh, the thing that drives us, I guess I should have done this slide next, is what happens when communities of learners practice acquiring moral insight together, giving each other feedback and reporting on how their leadership attempts go. So you may be familiar with the typical feedback basis of learning. So if, uh, let's say, if you practice the piano or learn to play a sport or, you know, whatever it is, you can, <laughs> if you're like me when my mother tried to get me to learn the piano, I would do the same thing over and over again and not get better because repetition is not practice. Practice requires doing something, reflecting on how it went, making a plan to do it differently, and then doing it different and better the next time around. That's what makes it practice and that's what creates the learning. So what happens when you not only engage in a feedback learning process of practicing leadership, but you also do it with other people where you can take ideas from their attempts and use them in your own and they can take ideas from yours and when you actually come up with your plans you can get feedback from people who say you know you might want to try doing this instead or that instead that's the principle that we built the leadership amplifier app off of and so you can actually if you wanted to you could do it right now while we're talking about it go to the app store or google play on yours and try it out um, it's available so uh, all of our teaching tools are free except for this one and this one uh, is a free trial and it's like uh, $2 per seat per month as a subscription for using and that's because it costs us money to like actually run the um, servers and stuff that go behind this and, and so forth and so uh, but the free trial is free on the app and on this one um, what you can do is you can download it you do a quick registry and then my recommendation is that if you do do this today here in this session you'll notice there's three options once you log in. One is just to try it out, two is to join an existing community, three is to create a community of your own. And so I recommend trying it out first and before you actually you know, run a, a start running communities or try to join them or whatever else. Um, what you'll see here, this is the home page, and these little rectangles here are the um, plans that people have submitted that they are practicing their leadership with. You could click on those and uh, give feedback or get ideas from other people's plans. The green button on the bottom is how you start your own plan. There's menus to navigate at the bottom so you can look at uh, the community's plans or you can uh, manage your own plans or you can look at the notifications you've received. There's point systems and, and levels that you can earn in an attempt to gamify the process. And um, there's also just for administrating the communities are the things up at top. So you can click on this and manage your, the little icon on the left side at the top and that manages your personal profile. You can click on the name of the community and it will take you to a list of communities and you can go in and manage your communities from there as you work on the app. The personal profile tells you, you know, how many plans you've made, how much advice you've given, how many points you've earned, what level you're at. You can even dive in further. There's a gear symbol up here that lets you edit your username or your photo and personalize it and make it your own. Maybe create an avatar or whatever you want to do to have fun with it. Sometimes when I do this with uh, uh, various classes, they'll put in like superhero names or jet fighter pilot names into their usernames and they get very creative. In fact, I, I did it once with an MBA class and there was a guy in the class who just was a super fun guy with just kind of a, um, a, a different personality from everybody else. And his name was Hex. And so everybody in the class used some variation of the word Hex in their nickname for the entire class. They all like conspired to do it together. And Hex had a good sense of humor, so you know, went along with it. But there, there's various ways people have fun with it. Um, and then, uh, let me move on from here. What happens is the main functionality is in the building and the using of the plans. Of, so we plan an event where I'm going to practice leadership. It actually syncs into your calendar so you can choose an event that you already have or you can choose to create an event if there isn't one in your calendar. And then in that event, how am I going to practice leadership? And so you'll select 
what virtue am I going to practice? And how am I going to make that excellent? It also asks, who do you have in mind? So like if, as I used in my earlier example, like I do compassion and you guys are inspired, but she thinks that's ridiculous, that's not compassion. What it does is it breaks the uh, groups or individuals up so you can actually think, what would it look like for this person and make sure that I'm really trying to exhibit leadership for everyone involved, not just what I think it is in this particular moment. Um, so all of these questions for that, it, uh, asks you, it asks you how you're going to inspire people. The point of this is to take activities in which you might not normally have thought about those virtues and think about them as a way of generating moral insight and uh, to do it together in a community of learners. So um, that is a brief intro. Like I said, we're not going as deeply into the other tools as we uh, did into the first one. We wanted to, the first one. We just wanted to show you an example of what it was. But um, we think that this is exciting. We continue to develop and try to improve the app and make it better. Let me pause there. I'm going to talk more about making it better in a minute. But any questions or comments about the app before we move on? Ryan, how, you, how are you using it? Like a, a team? Would use yeah, so in a corporate setting, the way we would do it, there's a couple of ways. One is like, let's say I manage a unit or a team in the organization. We could say, hey, let's work on this together. And in that case, as long as you know, people understand the concept of, of the leadership, you could just do it and make it part of how we function as a unit, a team, you know, whatever group it is that we want to have a community in. There's also, and one of the reasons like a lot of the people that we sought out to invite to this event were HR people, corporate trainers, you know, whatever else, is because you can create a community out of a classroom. So for example, right now, we're running, this is Manuela Perry from Executive Education at the uh, University of Louisville College of Business. And we have an executive education class going right now. Uh, yesterday was our fifth class. Normally in executive education, you bring everybody in, you fly them in for three days or whatever it is, and you just stay in the hotel and you go through the training for three days. But in this uh, class that we're doing, we actually break it up and you come once a week for a morning uh, for six weeks. And the reason why we do it that way is so that in between the training, you actually practice what it is we're learning in the training. We use Leadership Amplifier to help people. All right, this week we're going to work on courage. All right, pick your events, make the plans, respond to each other, and we do that in between the training events. Um, so those are a couple of ways that, that it can be used. Any other questions or thoughts? Yeah, Vivian. Oh, I'm sorry. You first. I was just going to share some of my experience. Having taught with Ryan and using that with my MBA course, um, it also gave me as an instructor, Good point. especially in, in the online format, um, an opportunity to really engage with my students and, and help them um, as, as well as their peers, but also get in on some of the conversation about some of the real world challenges they were facing and, uh, and also to, to see that growth and development through their co-interaction with their peers, I think was one of the key benefits of the course. Um, Vivian actually was very good at, at like using, so I mentioned how the, the learners communicate and give feedback to each other, but it turns out if you're the, the community manager, which would usually, like if you're doing it in a corporate training course, you'd be the instructor who does that, it gives you an opportunity to coach them on how they're applying the things you're teaching in class in between classes. So they put up their plans and you say, maybe you should try this, right, or whatever it is, and, and give them coaching in between. One of the reasons we did this is, if you look at the research, when it comes to corporate training, people tend to retain about 10% of what they get in classroom learning. And so one of the things we're hoping to do with this app is actually help people retain and apply much more thoroughly and throughout all they do because we're actually working on it and not just talking about it in the classroom. Thank you, Vivian. You had a comment as well? I have a question. So uh, yes. Obviously, in sales, it's going to be like a cost question. But so, <laughs> if I, if I um, host a leadership workshop. Yep. And you know, I spoke to you earlier how it's a multi-week. Mm -hmm. This seems like a great platform to sort of track people's progress and sort of what they're doing between each workshop. But the question is then, is it a cost only to me as the admin, and then? My folks can go in uh, and use it, or does everybody who even uses it have to pay the 
The answer is no. We had the, so it's interesting, right? Because when you use it in a university setting, the way you would set it up is like make the students pay, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, but that is how universities are set up. In the corporate setting, it's like it would be so onerous, onerous to manage um, everybody paying for their own thing that we, we decided it's easier to design this for corporations and then adapt it for uh, universities. And so it's, it's set up that way is that the corporation, so like let's say that you want to do it with uh, 10 people in your unit and you're going to work on it for four months. Then the subscription is like $2 per person, so that it's uh, $20 and then four months, $80. So you, you could pay $80 and boom, it, it runs for those four months. And that's how it's set up. And there's no extra fees or anything else beyond that. So it's not like a no, it's just, I mean, it literally goes through the, the Apple um, or Google, you know, like whatever you already have on your phone and, and just manages it that way. So, good question, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Is, is there a desktop version? Not yet. So now that's the segue to my next slide. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Ooh, I, I did that on purpose. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the thing is anytime you build anything, but I think maybe especially software, you learn as much by building it as you do by you know, what you designed in the first place. So we have a whole list of like, features that we'd like to do. One of which we'd love to do is build the desktop version and make them interchangeable and that sort of thing. And, and, um, you know, and there's others as well. So for example, one of the things we've learned after building this is that building the, the legal and, and uh, regulatory restrictions on universities are actually much more stringent than they are on corporations. And so one of the things we're actually looking for is a corporate partner to work with us on helping us take this with actually like uh, the university won't let us give or sell it outright but like we can lease it for zero dollars or a dollar a year or something like that, right? Um, and make some kind of arrangement. But the problems we have is uh, the university won't let us do international distribution. Right now it's set up to only work in uh, US App Store or Google Play. And if we had a corporate partner who we gave it to or leased it to or whatever else, boom, you click a button <laughs> and that's gone, right? So right now if we have a group and you have nine uh, American citizens and then one person who's like from Germany, then the one person from Germany is like, it doesn't work on my phone, right? And that's dumb. We don't want that to happen. And so um, uh, that's one of the things that we've come across. A state university is a government organization and that means there's all kinds of weird revenue procedures for you know, managing the, the thing, but we have to get revenue or else we'll go out of business because you got to pay the server costs in order to keep an app going, that kind of thing. Poorly equipped, yeah, universities, we have marketing departments, but not like corporate marketing departments, you know, that sort of thing. And, and, uh, and we do it through external developers, and a lot of corporations have their own developers in-house. So these are the obstacles we're facing to keeping the app running well and to improving it. Like we also, the developer side is because there are so many things we can do to make it even cooler than it already is. And, you know, we've learned those by using it, but we can only go so far with what we have. So one of the things we're doing is we're looking for a corporate partner that we could share the technology with, we could introduce exciting new feature ideas. Some of them could be ones that are especially useful to the corporation that partners with us as well as to others of their clients who might want to use it. Uh, you know, we, we would be fine like giving the majority of the profits to the corporation. We're a not-for-profit institution anyways and we just want to make sure we keep this running and achieve our mission of increasing positive leadership in the world. And, uh, you know, there's opportunities for joint branding with it, internal use, all these kind of things. So, there's my quick plug on that. If you happen to know either your own or any other corporations that would be interested in, in partnering with us on this, we would be very interested in having those conversations. But as you can see, if you downloaded it, it's available to use right now and works well. And while there are things we can improve about it, there's a lot of good things about what's uh, already working with it as well to use in the corporation, classroom, wherever else. Um, so. Those are the ones we dive deeply into. I want to just quickly introduce you to some of our other tools. A lot of them are available on the table for you to pick up copies of as you walk out. And so you can just, if there's some that interest you more than others, pick the ones that interest you, take them with you so you can try them out wherever you are. 
Uh, you can see if you don't, if somebody grabs your copy, of the hard copy, and you didn't get it, go to this website here, and you'll be able to order any of these uh, from us uh, at your own discretion. But um, you'll see there's multiple types of stuff we have. So for example, learning activities. There's the management team conflict role play, the structured ethical reflection, the core stories exercise. All of these are things like just on this last one, the core stories exercise. If we're going to be working on exhibiting compassion with excellence, then you need to understand empathy. And this gives you a visceral, practical experience in the classroom to understand it in a way that then when I go out during the week and practice my leadership, there, um, it's, it's real to me in terms of what I see I can do with this and, and how it applies. There are uh, virtues and vices story series. So I've been teaching some version of this kind of stuff for over a decade now. And one of the advantages of, of teaching it the way I do is I've had a million students from the executive level down to the undergraduate who goes out and tries to apply this and has, in some cases, some really uh, stunning stories. And in other cases, like tried hard and it didn't work or, you know, whatever else. And many of them have given us permission to use their stories and they're great for teaching. But they're slightly different from your normal case study. Normal case study is, you know, here's a business problem, you get to the end, what should we do? We talk about it. And we have some of those in terms of, you can see the case studies there. Um, but these are actually deep explorations of what it means to exhibit virtues with excellence or to try and fail to exhibit them with excellence and to think, how does this compare to your experience? What would it look like if you tried to do this in your organization? How would you do it differently from this person? And it gives us really good, deep conversations about those virtues. There's technical notes about uh, things that, um, that are just we need to actually understand the concepts behind. So for example, the leading with compassion <coughs> technical note uh, tells, you know, a lot of times when we talk about compassion, what do you mean by that? It's actually not as uh, obvious as, excuse me, might seem up front. There are issues you have to deal with like compassion fatigue. What is that and why does that get in our way and how do we deal with it? Um, and then there are, we have many of the case studies or guided discussions. So all of these things of various kinds are, are available for use. Some of them here. If not, just contact us through the website and uh, they're all free. Um, the newest one, one that we're excited about, we just finished creating the University of Louisville. Ath it what? Oh, I thought you were talking about Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I thought um, the University of Louisville Athletic Department uh, has been, if you've been following the local news over the past few years, you know there's been a lot of turmoil here and we've had some inside views on things that have happened. This is a great case for introducing how you integrate culture. Oh, and actually we have some people who saw an early version of the cases. We talked about it when we were at the Young Presidents Organization. Um, We've developed this now. There's been even more change since we presented it at the YPO. So we updated it and have the newest version available. Uh, but it's a great case for helping understand what's the intersection of leadership with culture and when you're trying to create culture change. Um, we are also working on a new project. So uh, over here, you'll see Vivian Blade. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> So Vivian and Blade, in addition to being a fabulous uh, consultant and ha uh, having her own consultancy that she does there, is also a professor at the University of Louisville and has uh, begun working with us in the Project of Positive Leadership and has developed a number of her own tools which will be online sometime in March. Yeah, first week in March. First week in March. Uh, Vivian is the first of what we're hoping will be a collection of people uh, that we're, going, we're uh, for the moment calling our virtue experts. So Vivian has a book, uh, Resilience Ready, um, and has established herself as a leader in the field in the topic of resilience and how you, leadership resilience, organizational resilience. Uh, she's sharing her tools with us to share with all of you. And, um, and we're hoping that we can gather other consultants and coaches, coaches with expertise, particularly on virtue topics. So we wanna have our compassion expert and our courage expert and our ambition expert that we can have uh, the, to collaborate with us and to build up this uh, set of tools. So these are not available yet, but instead of new, it should say coming soon. <laughs> it's almost here. Um, but you can also, in, in this case, you can visit her, her uh, website, uh, vivianblade.com and find lots of uh, stuff there as well. Um, and if you know other uh, consultants, coaches, people who are experts on particular virtues, let us know because we're trying to gather these people and, and make them part of the project on positive leadership. 
Um, so who else do you know who could be a virtue expert? And then the other thing is those of you who are not coming from the consultancy side of the world, but from organizations, uh, if you would love, we would love to partner with you to help make tools. So like, for example, there may be a, a police department case study that you think would be useful. Or if we were partnering with you for um, instruction and case studies, we could say, all right, well, what specific things that we can make to help you in your instruction in what you're doing that we could also you know, use as tools that we help to spread positive leadership in the world. And so if there's uh, ways to collaborate with corporations around building tools as well, we're also interested in, in exploring those opportunities. Um, so let me pause there. Those are our, uh, just kind of an overview of tools for our, our tool showcase. Um, I'm gonna talk about initiatives that we're doing as well as in a moment, but any other questions about the tools that we offer to the world? No? All are free except for the Leadership Amplifier has a subscription and everything else is free. So, um, you know, eventually we're going to have to figure out how we uh, make long-term funding for the department, uh, for the Project on Positive Leadership work. But, you know, we're starting with the, hey, let's make the world better and then we'll figure out the funding after that. And that's uh, maybe a risky way to approach it, but that's, that's how we've decided we're going to try to approach it. And honestly, with the generous help, um, uh, Vince Tyre, uh, who was the athletic director until uh, December, arranged for us to help get the initial funding to get this started. And so that's, that's where a lot of this is coming from. All right, for other initiatives, there are lots of things we do. One of them is the Tyre Family Distinguished Conversations uh, series. And we're trying to do something a little different here. A lot of times there are speaker series and people come in and give a talk and take off. But we actually think that we're going to increase positive leadership more in the world through conversations, it doesn't mean people can't give talks, but through conversations where we engage people uh, around topics of positive leadership. So Bob Lydon is one of the world's experts on servant leadership. He's coming in to do a research presentation next month. And uh, we're planning events for next year as well. We'd like to mix up uh, the corporate executives that we bring in to speak versus um, uh, academic inst uh, instructors and so that way we get both types of experience and expertise and what we bring in and if uh, we bring people into the Tyre family conversations uh, series that people from our community want to meet with and talk to that's what we're doing yeah we want them to meet with faculty we want them to meet with students we want to meet the, them to meet with our uh, constituencies outside the university we want to have more conversations about positive leadership <coughs> um, one of the things that we're curious about is if this showcase is useful, would it be useful to have other showcases to show you the tools, both the ones we already have and the ones we're continuing to develop? Should we have a virtue expert like Vivian actually come in and, and specifically showcase her tools? Uh, what, what should we do in terms of future ones? So there's a QR code and if, if uh, you're willing and able, would love to get your feedback on both this event and what we could do moving forward that's helpful to you and to others in the community. Um, another initiative that we have, and here's another QR code, um, we want to honor leadership. However, we want to do it in a way that's a little bit non-traditional compared to normal things. We don't want to say, oh, so-and-so is such a great leader. We want to find out what are the acts of amazing leadership that you've seen in the business world, in the community, wherever else, and we want to honor those acts. Because remember, we define leadership as beginning with acts of exceptional virtue that other people choose to follow because of the other praising emotions they feel. So if you know of great acts of leadership, then please you know, click on this QR code and tell us about it in the form there, and we're going to find ways to honor these people, because another way to spread positive leadership in the world is to reinforce it and let people know. Yeah, Remy. Uh, we also have postcards out on the table with that QR code. If you want to take some back to your organization. And Hand them out to people. Your organization can also nominate or honor leadership as well. So feel free to take those postcards. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, we also do, as I mentioned earlier, we partner with executive education. Um, and some of these things uh, we do in both the uh, Project on Positive Leadership and Executive Education. So we mentioned that there's currently a certificate program going on. We actually do these certificate programs four times a year around different virtues. So uh, right now we're working on people-centered virtues and we're uh, focusing on um, ins uh, inspiring profound collaboration. 
starting in April, we're going to talk about leading adaptation and focus on virtues that have to do with adaptation. And then in the summer, there will be another one, in the fall, another one, and they'll be organized around different virtues. And so uh, they also are, you can earn certificates for attending them, and you can earn a, um, the, uh, what's the phrase? Yes, an attestation of, um, mastery. of mastery, a attestation of mastery if you earn all four certificates. Uh, so we're working on that, you can see. <laughs> what? It's like a badge. Like a badge, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, you, yes, you can do that. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Uh, also, we have a big event coming up next month, the Navigating Leadership Now Conference, and so there'll be a lot of speakers uh, that'll be participating in that. It'll be a day-long event, kind of a TED Talk style event uh, that talks about what does leadership look like in the new normal of where we are now? Are we, as we're thinking we might or might not be approaching the end of COVID and all the kind of crazy things that have been going on? It's, that'll be actually probably the two-year anniversary of when most of us went into quarantine the first time. Um, and so we're going to ha be having that conference and, and talking about that all day with uh, other executives. It'll be hosted as well. So um, we are also have a research incubator. We've identified the various people around the University of Louisville who study diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we're exploring with them what happens when positive leadership meets diversity and equ equity and inclusion, and what research should this inspire, and how can the project on positive leadership support this research? And so, and actually, not just the University of Louisville, we even have one of our participants comes from Spalding, Sal Spalding uh, University as well. So that one is in its infancy. We're trying to figure out, you know, how to make it continue to grow and succeed. Uh, we ha also every year we provide grants or fellowships. For, and this is not just for academics, but also for uh, people in the field to either, it's like a $5,000 grant to either do research on positive leadership or develop new instructional tools that you need money to help you support develop those tools. And that's open to anyone in the world who wants to apply for them. Uh, this year we actually are funding one from Israel. So uh, literally anywhere in the world. And uh, then also another thing we're doing is we're working on assembling a board of advisors for the Project on Positive Leadership to provide, help us with our strategic direction and, and give us participation in the community. I think that's everything. Sorry, I breezed through a lot of that, but just the point of a showcase is to show things. So we just wanted to uh, exhibit this to you and show you the opportunities and invite you to partner with us in our mission of increasing positive leadership in the world. So uh, I'll take any questions and then after that we'll set you free for the rest of your day. Any, any questions before we move on? Okay. Uh, when, what's the evolution to a center? Ah, thank you. So uh, it's the reason we call it the Project on Positive Leadership is because we're already doing things um, and we needed some entity, but uh, we actually have an application into the central administration in the university to turn it into the Center on Positive Leadership. Uh, and so that happens as fast as the Faculty Senate lets us do it. Uh, if you felt like that was tongue-in-cheek, it was. And <laughs> so my guess is, is earliest would be the end of this academic year latest would be sometime in the fall, most likely, when we turn from the Project on Positive Leadership into the Center for Positive Leadership. Thanks. Any other questions? Yeah. I want to say I think you did a very good job this morning because there's so many other things that go into it, the introduction to the moral insight. If this was a true module, how long, how much time would be spent on it? Good question. Most of our tools are designed to happen in like an hour and 15 minutes. Um, so what you could do is treat it modularly, either combining with stuff you're already using or combining the tools that we have. And so you could do a one hour and 15 minute session. Or you could say we could use five of these and spread it out over the day with a lunch break and whatever else. And it would take probably six to seven hours to you know, do that or whatever it is. And, and so I, I think the idea is for it to be modularized in that way. Does that answer the question? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Any others? All right. Oh, yes. Yes. If, if, if we utilize, I thought, sorry, if we utilize this, you feel my pain. <laughs> uh, at our own institutions, um, what's the best way for attribution? Oh, uh, I think. I mean, it, it'll depend on the tool. So, for example, if you were to use the Moral Insight one, I think there's actually um, a little U of L thing on the slides, and so it's there. Same with the cases, the ones that are like case studies, it has a little imprimatur at the top. 
And if that's the case, that's fine. Just use it, hand it out. We're not looking for anything more than that. So thank you. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you for coming this morning. We're so glad we had you here. Bunch of tools are on the table out there, Ramey. Right? A big thanks to Ramey for like just amazing doing everything. So yes, I want to thank you. And thank you all for coming. We appreciate having you here today.